Hello everyone, and uh, I'm going to go a little off script here. Uh, I've been actually writing a little bit of scripts the last couple of videos, if you notice at all. Um, I'm going to just like talk off like offhand what I think of this chapter, and I think it's a really good setup chapter. I know that it's kind of crazy how 85% um, of Onigashima um, at this point has been a setup for one way or another. Um, but it, the thing that really is kind of cool about this chapter is that, you know, also, last five Thanksgivings, we've gotten, like, some of the best chapters. I mean, I don't know, I don't think Oda actually gives a crap about American holidays. I just think it's really funny that, like, <laughs> literally, we get some of the best, um, chapters on Thanksgiving. Uh, anyways, uh, it, it was a big lore drum, uh, lore info dump, um... But I love how it goes back to Zoro's old days in the training dojo, uh, with the whole Shimotsuki thing. Um, and actually seeing, at the end of this chapter, Shimotsuki and Kuzaboro was quite um, a big deal. Honestly, one of the few times that we've seen um, a character that... I, he seemed a lot... He reminded me a lot of when Toki was revealed two Thanksgivings ago, oddly enough, when I was thinking this character was never going to get revealed without the silhouette, and then we just got it out of nowhere. Um, we also see, like, Zoro, like, the progression of this chapter, you know. We see him, like, try to take a Shison Son to King, which we've seen damage even Kuma pre-time skip. We've, we've seen it take down Mr. One, and here it does jack shit. Um, very cool looking panel that Oda did, honestly. It looks like King took quite a lot of damage here. But then when you actually zoom in, he's just, like, flinging, like, his, the top of his skull again. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Queen's made out of, or King's made out of, or Queen for that matter. Queen also, uh, tells us that he is a Lunarian and what they consider the gods. I think that was just clarification on... Um, something that was going on in a previous um, chapter. So I think it was really important that we got um, it in this chapter that we got confirmation that he is a Lunarian and that they were gods, kind of similar with the whole Sun God Nika thing. Something that was interesting that a Reddit uh, thread pointed out was that a lot of the fights have had info dumps, whether it's been Black Maria about Zoan Awakenings or whether it's... Um, uh, you know, Zoro with this whole king business, or, you know, Quinn with the Mads, so I, I think we're, what we are building towards with all these fights is different types of pieces, and I think this chapter did a really good job with, like, even, like, the cover story with Tashigi, for example, it, like, it sets the tone for the chapter, if you didn't see the spoilers, you would be going, why is Tashigi on the cover, but then after the chapter, you're like, okay, I get it. You know, of course, Tashigi and Smoke are going to be on the cover, considering that Tashigi reminds Zoro of um, Koina, who um, was taken out by the stairs. And she had a significant role in Zoro's life and was the granddaughter of Shumotsuki Kuzuburo. Now, the build up to this with the whole like sword thing and having its own loyalty, I mean, that could be a video on its own, honestly. Because th th it's interesting, we've, I don't think we've ever really gotten any discussion about the swords in One Piece being, having their mind of their own, but th this is a pretty important thing during his fight. Also, King almost tries to blow himself up, like, suicidal, so, again, I'm not exactly sure what that means, or what that, the significance behind that. Um, I don't know if his body can just explode on impact, but what I'm thinking is that Lunarians can actually straight up become, like, fire. Uh, there's some really cool panels with King silhouetted too in this chapter, um, with the backdrop of, like, explosions and stuff. And then, like, King's, like, uh, I've never seen a man and his swords fight and stuff like this with each other, like, in fighting, and, and I, that was pretty cool. Uh, and then we get these really cool callbacks to Log Towns where I was like, well, wait, wait, maybe Cursed Blades actually have a significance here, and maybe it's not the wielder. And, and this is confirmed by um, uh, Kitetsu, um, who says basically the same thing, that, you know, it's not about the sword user, um, it's not about the curse, it's about being able to use the sword um, 
you know, using the sword's personality. You know, the sword has a personality of its own, so trying to use that. Um, and then once we, we, he actually pieces together, like, oh, well, somebody left in Wano 50 years ago. Now, I kind of wonder, this is kind of a stretch, but I wonder if it has something to do with the Korizumi, because they had their whole, um, plithe and all this stuff, you know, about 59 years ago. So we get it squeezed somewhere, you know, probably 60 years ago, so it's probably 10 years before this event. But I wonder if uh, Shimotsuki Kuziburu actually left Wano with a village of his own because of the events of the Korizumi and uh, the daimyo, like, infighting that was happening in Wano. I definitely think that's an issue here. Um, and I do like the words here that uh, Shimotsuki Kuziburu that I had on the screen earlier uh, said about the Navy uh, being the ones that would actually be the ones that would actually find and take him out. Um, he doesn't say uh, the Wano government is going to take him out. He says the people, the Navy, you know, if you actually tell people that I'm here as a samurai. This also explains how Zoro got those two katanas. Um, that wasn't really anything that people were wondering for years, but <laughs> very cool nonetheless. Seeing the Logtown thing and seeing him uh, Yubashiba and, and the other sword that he had that broke and he actually had a... Well, actually the other one hasn't broken yet, but I think everyone knows that uh, he's going to get an upgrade with the Sundai at some point in his heart. Um, and it was kind of interesting how he's like, oh, you know what? I think that village elder was actually somebody significant. A total Zoro moment, completely forgetting uh, a significant character and then just being like, oh, well, Shit, this guy's actually really important. Um, it's also pretty interesting when you think about um, the whole Ryuma thing, too, and the fact that he's Shimotsuki, the fact that Yasui is a sh Shimotsuki. So it, it, there has to be a point in which we get a proper Zoro flashback in this arc that actually gives us something, you know, because he could not have been. Supposedly, he's going from dojo to dojo, and he just happened to be there. And I I just don't believe that, that this happened to be a place, that he happened to be with all these Shimotskis, and that his, you know, even the, the son of Shimotsuki Kuzuburu, he happened to meet a coincidence. Really fantastic chapter, and I guess I'll see you guys till next time. Bye.